the Trevor Jackson Podcast. What's good with y'all on this beautiful Monday, man? I want to speak on something before I get into the conversation. It's that um, I'm for people wanting to come to this country for the opportunity. I'm for people wanting to grow and leave a negative thing and wanting to contribute to society. But legally, not illegally, if you're going to contribute to society, you have to do it in a legal way, man. You have to pass the test. You have to do whatever it takes that the government asks of you to do to come over here legally and not illegally. Now, this topic of discussion about the migrant crisis has been like in my algorithm a lot lately on YouTube, on television, and on multiple platforms, on podcasts. I listen to Apple Podcasts and Spotify a lot, and it's just people are concerned in America, like really concerned. And I wanted to just bring it to my platform and give my thoughts about it. I've been listening to Judge Joe Brown on Dana with the data platform, talk about it a lot. I've been listening to Anton Daniels, uh, Officer Tatum, a plethora of people just consistently talking about the migrant crisis and how it's affecting America. But what I wanted to do was go back to the root of it and see what caused it and what started this process to break down the way that it's breaking down now. Obama Biden administration deported more than three million Americans. My question to you is if an individual is living in the United States of America without documents and that is his only offense, should that person be deported? No. Depending if they committed a, a major crime, they should be deported. And the president was left in his, President Obama, I think, did a heck of a job. To compare him to what, what this guy's doing is absolutely, I find, close to immoral. But the fact is that, look, we should not be locking people up. We should be making sure we change the circumstance, as we did, why they would leave in the first place. And those who come seeking asylum, we should immediately have the capacity to absorb them, keep them safe until they can be heard. A 15-second, if you could, if you wish to answer. Should someone who is here without documents, and that is his only offense, should that person be deported. That person should not be the focus of deportation. We should fundamentally change the way we deal with them. <clears throat> we should have the capacity to absorb them. What do we want to absorb them for? First of all, my thoughts about it from a political aspect. You know, it's a plethora of reasons to keep capitalism alive to keep the balance in between the rich and the poor, to keep people working. Another thing, absorb them. Uh, I think of like where a majority of the people live at in this country, and it's on the coast, California. You have more people live in California than you do all the other states in the Midwest, the Nebraska, the Nevadas, the Montanas, the Idahos, the all of those states combined, you have more people living in Southern California than you do all of those states combined. So we have the space, though, to absorb individuals. That's true. Then he said if they didn't commit a violent crime. We should be able to keep them here. But they're here illegally. So we're incentivizing people. For doing something illegal. when our own people, we have been sending them to the prison industrial system for before I was born for trying to provide, for trying to create opportunity for their family. But we're incentivizing migrants to come over here. Let's get into the next topic, though. I don't want to make it too heavy. Administration hit a peak at a city council meeting as aldermen and residents keep clashing over how taxpayer money should be spent on migrants. The council's Immigration and Housing Joint Committee couldn't vote or even start the meeting because some members didn't show up. But people still got to speak during public comment. And alderman Byron Cicho Lopez announced a November referendum where voters can decide if the city should tax millionaires 3% to help migrants. 
We have 120,000 millionaires who live in the city of Chicago who can pay the first share, and there are solutions so that we can do both. Care for new neighbors as well as the current neighbors. Are y'all lying to us? Because, see, we know that the budget stated that you guys spent $400 million on the migrants who are illegal immigrants last year. The city is currently in a $235 million deficit, which means that you guys overspent the budget to pay for people who have not paid any taxes. <clears throat> Dude was aggressive about the millionaires assisting with the decision that they didn't make. They didn't approve for the people to come over here. Your po politicians approved that. They should be held responsible, my perspective. Now, it seems like the people that's always struggling to have something against the millionaires. You know, I'm not no super financially stable guy, but I'm on my way to it. And I ain't going to let nothing stop me. But... When I listen to this rhetoric being spoke, tax the millionaires 3% to assist with the migrant crisis. When I think about that, I think about the hard work it takes just to get uh, to 100000 The consistency it takes just to get some money, just to get your thing floating, just to get your thing going. And you're going to tax me for a decision that I didn't make. I've been listening to a lot of politicians talk uh, real crazy now, like how they talk about the um, they're going to start taxing individuals capital gains tax before they even obtain the gain. Ridiculous rhetoric. But now you want to tax millionaires three percent of their finances to contribute to the migrant crisis, something that they didn't agree to. I'm the person that believes like right. I'm going to give y'all my take. I'm going to be 100% trill with y'all on this time because I come from an environment where a majority of the people voted Democrat repetitively just because they liked the person more than another person. But I'm going to be 1,000 with y'all. You know, we've heard over the years, I'm 44, that the rich need to pay their fair share. We need to create a tax hike for them so we can give people more and, and do more for the people. That's not what's being done. They're not doing more for the people with those tax hikes. And you're being taxed also, the poor. So my thought process is the people that has the finances is the people that creates opportunity for the people that don't have it. They the ones that create the jobs. They the ones that give the bonuses when you already at the job. They the ones that's going to give you the pay raise. They the ones that's going to make sure that you straight. The government ain't. The government will get you when you when they need you to be dependent on their structure or what they got going on. But to me, like I don't like when they say tax the rich because once you tax them and you take that money from them, that money that you taxing them could have went to the people. It might not necessarily always go to the people, but it goes to the people. And if you tax them, it definitely not going to go to the people because they're not going to create opportunity with their money for others when you taxing them. Think about it. If you are a poor individual or you are a person that's financially struggling and you're trying to get your stuff together, think about if you had a billion dollars. You made a billion dollars last year, right? And the government wanted 28% of that. What's that? $280 million. What could you have done with those $280 million to assist the people that the government is going to do? You could have helped your people out and the people in your town, your city, your state with those $280 million way more than the government could have helped people out nationwide and they ain't even going to do it. They ain't even going to do it. They're just going to give it, give the funds. I don't know what they're going to do with the funds. They might send it to war. They might send the funds over here, over there. You don't know what they're going to do with it. So people locally and nationally got to be held accountable for these actions. Now, let's talk about work for a minute. I'm going to play the clip. 
jobs. Nobody likes to work. Nobody does. But it's necessary to keep the economy afloat. It's necessary. But this clip is called Your Replacement is Here. Slowly, we had an application pool that was a little bit different. People coming to work here. People, people looking for jobs. What he's welding here again are welded axle components. Jamie McGregor is the CEO of McGregor Metal, which makes welded parts for the auto and farm industries. Right now, about 10% of his workforce is Haitian, over 30 employees. I wish I had 30 more. Our Haitian associates come to work every day. They don't have a drug problem. They'll stay at their machine. They'll achieve their numbers. They are here to work. And so in general, that's, that's a stark difference from what we're used to in our community. I'm going to play that again so y'all can hear that twice. They're here to work. They stay at their stations. That's different than what we're used to at our community. Who is he talking about? Let's be specific. I know people want me to say black, but I, I'm not going to minimize what he's saying. He said it's different. I'm just going to say Americans. We don't like work. That's how I started the clip off with. We don't like to work. We don't want to work, right? You know, I come from a lifestyle where I wasn't doing well with myself financially for years and growing up in the equal housing opportunity projects. And uh, I worked for a company that changed my life. It allowed me to marry my wife and it allowed me to buy the ring. It allowed me to go on trips. It allows me to own a home, be a homeowner and be a person that I would consider living a good, good life, a good quality life. And, uh, you know, we complain about work. I don't want to say we because I don't want to include myself in that. People complain about jobs. I can't stand this job. I'm tired of this job. I don't like the consistency of it. I'm tired of it. They don't want to give me a raise. I can't go over here and get this job. I can't do this. I'm sick of it. I don't like the way they talk to me over here. I don't like this about the job. I don't like that. I don't like that. Quit focusing on what you like and what you can't deal with, man. You know, when most people apply for jobs, it's because they're in a situation where they want some change and they agree to the circumstances that the job has for them. But they lose sight of that when they get comfortable and they get some money and they get their bills called up. They lose sight of the situation that they was dealing with at the other job or the situation that they was dealing with in the street. And they wanted to change their life. They wanted to change their finances. They get comfortable and they lose sight of that and they start to complain. But then, you have people that doesn't have nothing. Came over her life depending on getting over her. They are illegal. They don't even have a driver's license, a, a state identification, and they don't care what you tell them to do. They're going to do it because they got to feed their family. They got to eat and they got to do what they want. want they want to achieve their dreams of the American dream. Your replacement here, man. Be thankful. Be grateful for what you do have. Be appreciative for what you do have because your replacement is here, man. It's time to unify as a whole, as a country, because these people that's in power, they're not going to hold themselves accountable. We just going to fall to the wayside and it's going to be up to us. Now, let me talk about something that's going on in New York from a clip that I seen. And then I'm going to end it off with Trump because I think that a lot of these topics people became aware of during the presidential debate when Trump was saying they was eating certain things in uh, Ohio, Springfield, Ohio. So let me play this clip about New York and then we're going to get into it. All right, a new pilot program from the city awarding up to $4,000 grants to migrant families who exit the shelter system and find their own housing. Fox Eyes Jessica Formoso takes a closer look at how the program works and if it's working so far. 
a shelter is an emergency solution that is intended for the short term. We, it is important that that short term solution is is safe and healthy and that we are providing uh, families with an opportunity to get back on their feet. The New York City Department of Homeless Services is offering up to $4,000 to migrant families with children and pregnant women who are currently residing in a city shelter. It's called the Asylum Move Out Assistance Program, a pilot program that began last December, helping asylum seekers transition from a shelter to permanent housing. So far, 150 families have benefited from the program. We've done 150 families starting about seven months ago. Um, I think we've had one person from a family, not even the whole family, come back. So that is, in my mind, a very strong success rate thus far. The one-time grant is modeled after the enhanced one-shot deal program for those in the traditional homeless shelters, only to be used for first and last month's rent, security deposits, moving expenses, and household supplies. That's New York, right. New York City, that money's supposed to be used for first and last month rent. I want y'all to do some research on, <laughs> on how much it costs to get a place to stay in New York. Moving expenses first and last month rent. Now, an individual might could take that 4000 But hold up. Hold up. Let me stop. Let me backtrack. You're a migrant. You don't have state id you got to get a lot of things going you don't have a job history what apartment complex is gonna let you have a first and last month rent have they lowered the standards for you to be able to get a place to stay have they lowered the standards to say just have the money and you can stay here you don't have to have no work history you don't have to have no id you can just come here give me give me the money come on for real though just real talk now, it's impossible for them to find a place to stay with four racks unless 10 of them families get together and get a 40 piece and they get a house or something like that. But uh, how are they going to do it without no IDs, identification or no job history or nothing? Think about what it takes for you to get a place to stay. Think about what it takes for you to get a loan to get a home. And you from here. How are they going to get a place to stay? Just real talk. How is that helping people? For, and four racks to leave. You know, they said that uh, when Trump gave us $1,200 for the COVID thing, that is the reason we're dealing with inflation. But you're giving the migrants four racks. Is that going to increase inflation or is that going to cause inflation more? I'm just concerned, man. Reason I'm making this is because I'm concerned with what we voting in office. If it's Trump or if it's Kamala Harris, I'm concerned about what we voting in office locally. I'm concerned about the decisions that they make once they get in office because I hear a lot of people spewing that we're going to do this with the tax money and we're going to tax these people here, that's directly affecting the American people. And I don't like it. Because the decision that they make with my tax money, I think I could have made a better decision myself. Let's get on into the last topic, though. You know, at the uh, DNC, not the DNC, not the RNC, but the uh, presidential debate, I don't... I'm losing my train of thought. I'm so, you know what I mean, flustered in it. My brain is so all over the place when I think about this migrant crisis and what's going on in cities like New York, Los Angeles, and people that's homeless are getting put on the back burner for migrants. They're not getting assistance. But some people want to be homeless. It's just a weird thing, like the situation that America allowed themselves to be in because I played the clip on the front that Biden, it's okay. We should be able to absorb this dumb shit. Yeah, we should be able to absorb it. So at the presidential debate, Trump was talking about we got to do something about the migrants. They are consuming things. Let me play the clip. No, before I play the clip. I started researching what's going on in Springfield, Ohio. 
And this clip is important because, like, when he said it at the presidential debate, people, Kamala laughed. People started ridiculing him. You seen the discernment in individuals when he said that. And it's really, really going down. Patients are running into trash cans. They're running into buildings. They're running into, uh, they flipping cars in the middle of the street. And I don't know how, like, y'all can be comfortable with this. Like, I don't know, like, who's getting paid from it. I feel like, I honestly feel like someone's getting paid from it in the background. They dropping, they, you got a bunch of people on a bus getting dropped off at a gas station to come down here. I know a single mom that FaceTimed me tonight, FaceTimed me this morning at the welfare office that really need, like, that really need something. And it's nothing but immigrants over there. And I don't even want to, like, seem like I'm coming down on the immigrants because it's the people that's bringing them down here. Because wherever they're at, that's what they're used to, bro. They're in the park grabbing up ducks by their neck and cutting their head off and walking off with them and, and eating them like. How they how they come in at the border of Mexico? Skip Tennessee, skip Indiana, skip past a plethora of states, Alabama, they skip through Kentucky, they skip through here and end up in Ohio. They busting them into these places and leaving them there. Dropping them off. Leave me something in the comment section, man. Chop it up with me. I'm responding to every comment. I just want to know y'all perspective. Am I wrong? Are y'all concerned? Thank y'all for tuning in to the show, man. Peace, love, plenty of abundance. Make sure you go get you some money. And I'm gone. Yeah. Jackson Park